we're really happy to be part of DC Design Week because we love the DC community. And not just all of DC, but the design community, you designers, you developers, you people in between who can't pick what you want to write code or make stuff look cool. We love all of you. Uh, I'm convinced that in, in the next few years, you'll all be the same. You'll all be just amazing unicorns. Um, anyway, tonight we have John Newman from New York City. Uh, I'm not going to give him a big intro. If you've read the event, you've seen his work. If you're like me, you've actually seen his work and you didn't realize it was his. I've seen his stuff on all kinds of blogs, all kinds of projects and stuff like that. And I was super excited to find out it was all him. Um, so I'm having a fanboy moment right now. Um, I hope you all will at the end of, after this talk. Um, He's going to talk to you about all the cool shit he's done, and I'm going to get off stage and hand him the microphone now. Alright, so I just want to go right into it, so you guys can get back to drinking. So basically, a few years ago, I read an article uh, that Stefan Sengmeister was quoted in about his year-long sabbatical, and he talked about how every morning, so he's out in Bali, every morning he'd wake up at 5 a.m. and inspired to do work. And so from, from my experience with my year-long journey, I found that every morning at 5 a.m. I was probably dead asleep or rushing to finish a project. So a little bit different, but when I first read the article, it really sparked my interest in how can I get to a point where I can do personal projects for one full year and still maintain a full time, a full daytime job. Sure, no problem. Sorry about that. So um, basically, I realized that if I slept two hours, two hours less per night and worked straight through the weekends, that I could kind of manage to finish one project per week. And obviously this is not the best really for your social life, but I figured, you know, this is what I really wanted. And I was even questioned by my family and friends about whether or not, you know, in all this free time, do you really want to do free projects? But I really was true to the fact that like I really wanted to get re-inspired, I really wanted to find my voice, and I found that like working at MTV during the day was just such a specific house style. And my style, what I wanted to accomplish, wasn't able, I wasn't able to do that. And I found that having the opportunity to do the projects really re-inspired me. So the name of the, the name of the project, the year-long project, is called Daydreams and Night Scenes. And essentially, the idea is that during the day, I'd be doodling or thinking about projects, and then at night, I would execute the projects and hopefully finish them in one week. So, the best way to do this is to encourage, basically, tell everyone you know, and then you'll be held responsible. So what I did was I went out and I told everyone on Facebook and Twitter and all these other social media sites. And what I also did was, I, I, I was able to get a show at the Type Directors Club, and so I figured, all right, well, I have to fill this huge gallery of work. And so now I really can't back out. So I had this amazing opportunity with them, and I knew that the best way was just to do it. So what I decided was every week I would create one project, and I would post it on Monday. The rules were very loose, it had to be designed, and I wanted to keep it that way because I didn't want it to be identities or logos all the time. I wanted to mature as a project mature. And for me, it wasn't about pulling swipe and just recreating it in a different way with different fonts. It was really about thinking about the projects and doing something totally original. So what I'm going to show today is just, uh, I'm going to group the projects together and what I learned from my experience. I'm not going to show every project because that's just ridiculous too much. But that's how, so we're gonna start first with this idea of just getting away from the computer. The first thing I started was, I realized that I, I was so hindered by the computer. The computer got in the way of my creativity. And I realized that I, I stopped drawing after school, after art school, I stopped painting. And the things that really made me excited about art went away as soon as I touched the keyboard. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. I just felt that like it was that hindrance. And so what I realized was that if I took the computer out of the equation, I started thinking differently. So this first project is called, well, it doesn't really have a name, rather, it's project number 15. And this is based off of sign language. And the idea here is that these hand gestures with this house paint and this vector font 
kind of tie it together and create like a, a new font. It's a marriage between the hand gestures and the green paint that's on my hands. Now, the, the difficult part was to try and get the, the, the paint to flow in a, a good way that kind of worked. And what's kind of interesting is that as the alphabet went on from A all the way to Z, the paint slowly would drip more and more down my hand. So it was this balance of how can I have the right amount of paint in my hand and the right letters. And then this is uh, a post that I did with the close-up of the letter G. And the idea here, again, was I, I knew I wanted to create the font, but I, I was really specific about I want to use the font. I don't want to just create something and throw it out there. I want it to be polished and look strong in terms of how it was going to be on my website. So this particular one is Get Your Hands Dirty. Kind of makes sense. This next project was inspired by an ancient uh, Chinese proverb that says, uh, it basically, the, the main idea is that we're all connected by a red string, and that no matter what happens, if it pulls, breaks, or rather, it never breaks, but if it pulls and stretches, the two lovers are connected. And so the title of the piece, or rather the title of the proverb is The Red String of Fate. And so again, if you can see like the close-up on the E, the idea here is again, using a real material, you know, I'll go in the computer, I'll create the vector, the idea, with the, uh, with the font, but then the way that that's going to be executed is always with the actual object with string. The next project was inspired by this idea of water falling. So I, I went um, to Japan over the summer, and when I was there, I was just kind of taken back by how they have a lot of um, beautiful grottos and beautiful temples, and a lot of times the focus is on the water. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if the focus was on this idea of this reveal. So I'm trying to contrast. So we have these black cups, and as the milk splashes, that moment when it splashes, you kind of catch the letter forms. So the poster on your right says, don't cry over spilled milk. And then you have the full alphabet on the left. And what's kind of funny is that, so this is the setup. So the idea is that I'm, I'm paying for all of this. This is out of my pocket. So I'm trying to not spend a lot of money. And also, I'm trying to be most efficient with my time and with my resources. So what we ended up doing was, and, and actually when I say we, it's me and my wife. My wife was the photographer on all these projects. Um, and I was obviously the art director and the lead designer. But for this project in particular, the setup was, we had the, the cup set up with this white background, but what we didn't realize was that the studio was really warm. And so as we were pouring and pouring, it started smelling. And the milk actually turned into like cheese. So we just shoot this like three or four times. And so it ended up being, uh, the cups got destroyed, but I think it turned out really well. So this next project uh, was actually the week that I turned, it was my birthday, so I turned 31. And it was this idea of, of, of the different numeric breakdowns of how old I was. So uh, the first one is, it goes hours, days, weeks, months, and years. And so it's this idea of playing again with materials. So some of my projects are super conceptual, and some of them are just experiments, if you will. And this particular one, actually, if you look close to the 31, it looks like a gradient, but that actually is a gradient from the paper. And so it's really about not trying to Photoshop anything. And again, with my job, what we'll do typically is we'll, we'll get like these cast photos in and they'll like overly Photoshop the face. So my whole thing was, how can I get away from Photoshop, get away from the computer, and really just let what the camera captures be the real thing? So as I was creating these projects, I kind of didn't realize that I was kind of creating a style. And it was more or less just because I was allowing it to kind of, I was basically allowing myself the opportunity to just experiment. And so this is actually a piece that I did for the 40 Days of Dating, and Jessica Walsh uh, approached me. <laughs> and Jessica Walsh approached me and she asked me to do uh, one of the quotes. And so this is all the emotions in those sheets. And really, I mean, I felt like, at the time, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. This was a quote that pretty much designed itself. But um, what I think was really cool is that as I was doing these experiments, I started realizing that what my style was, what I wanted to articulate, and then I got this great opportunity to do it. So what I realized was that a lot of things can happen during the year. And during this full year, um, the world was supposed to come to an end. I'm going to tell you it didn't. Uh, there was the, per the Superstorm Sandy, and uh, unfortunately the Boston tragedy was with the Boston Marathon. 
And I wanted this to be a real-time journey, so I wanted to document what was really going on around me and use that as inspiration. And I also realized that there really are no days off when you're starting this kind of project. So here's me in my apartment. This is after uh, Sandy came through. We have five feet of water outside my building. The power was cut off. And for three days, we were trapped inside of my building because there was the water outside and there was no power. So I'm basically freaking out because I thought that, okay, I'm not going to make the deadline. And thank goodness the water went down. The power did not come on. What I did was I moved my entire computer and all my work to my parents' house in Pennsylvania, and then I continued there, and I was able to still finish the project on Monday. And so, like I said, I was inspired by the situations that happened around me, and I wanted to make sure I had documented them. So this is a photo from my apartment of people evacuating from the area. These are people, what you can see here down at the bottom on their legs is actually trash bags, because there was so much oil and sewer, sewage and other horrible things in that water that I chose to stay and hope and realize that if I waited long enough the water would go down, these people decided to leave. And this really is a campaign towards just asking people to donate to the American Red Cross. So this is people uh, getting into a bulldozer. And then this is just me. I mean, I just felt like it just summed up all the frustration I felt during that week. And, um, and it was just a really, a really project that really touched me. So this next one is my ideal holiday card, or rather, what I think would be the ideal holiday card. So this is the cover of it. And there's these directions. So the directions say, please fill in the circles that represent the holiday you celebrate. So the idea here is, instead of getting the generic card that says happy holidays, or season's greetings, you get a specific message that's specifically for you. Unfortunately, there's only two religions that are on here, but I think you get the idea. So there's a, star, there's a star of David or a cross. So as you fill them in, you get two messages. Happy Hanukkah or Merry Christmas. And then as I extended it to wrapping paper, you can see here flat. And then the idea here was that um, this could easily be extended to wrapping paper as well as just cards. And again, you have the message specific to the person. So like I said, the world was supposed to come to an end on 12, 21, 12. Um, and I just, at, at first I was like, wow, if it really comes to an end, I won't have to finish all 52 projects. <laughs> Which um, I was uh, thinking about as like a positive thing, but um, obviously it didn't happen. Uh, I mean, that's a positive out of such a negative thing. But what I really want to do was, again, it's, this is really an experiment. It's playing with textures. It's not allowing to be too conceptual. And it's just the idea of like, what would it look like graphically if the world exploded? And then I also used R.E.M.'s lyrics from It's the End of the World as We Know It, and I Feel Fine. <laughs> I'll go back. I'm a little quick, so I'll go back. But basically, I mean also, like, how do you represent the Earth like blowing up? in like a friendly way. <laughs> vector shapes, right? <laughs> there you go, more blown up. So like I said, I was also um, inspired, or rather, you know, heartbroken over what happened with the Boston Marathon bombings. And um, it was just such a tragedy. And I, I went on Twitter, and what I noticed is that Pray for Boston was the hashtag at that time, and it was trending. And I just thought there was something so immediate about it, and something so specific. And I just wanted to create something that was just as visual, and that would be just as impactful. And so I originally started out, and I was thinking, OK, we're going to use these running shoes, and maybe it's a heart, or maybe it's, I don't really know. And then it just kind of came to me. And it was, again, obviously, this idea of the shoes and this idea of praying hands. And that's what it looked like in an environment. So what I realized also was that if I really allowed, my daily life could easily impact my projects as well. And I didn't need to go to some faraway country, however in one of these projects I did, some kind of line. But it's really your daily life. Every day, the way you walk, the way you go to work. And so this is the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy, which at the time, um, I took this picture, and this is actually walking in, down the stairs to what would be the street. 
And what's kind of beautiful about this is that it really reminds me of Venice, and it really has that, that beautiful mirrored reflection uh, of the trees. And at the time, I was wrapped up with um, a different project that week, and I was so involved with, with the devastation that I didn't realize that subconsciously, that really, that actually really was there, and it just needed to come out in a way. And so when I did these, this gene company, I thought, you know, so many times we have to, we, in my in what I do in my day job, it's like, okay, you gotta find the right model, and it has to be this kind of person, she has to look this way. And what I realized was that if you just reflected the person over, then it didn't really matter what the person was, and put the focus back on the genes. And so, with that, I also kind of played around with typography, and so I had mirror typography as well. So these are like, uh, these could be like postcards or like magazines. And a lot of time, like I didn't, I didn't want to like make myself and say that something had to be a certain, you know, a certain way. Uh, this is the letterhead. So basically, DL uh, 1961. They're like men and women's jeans. They have a horrible, horrible logo. Um, I bought a pair of jeans and just kind of was inspired. I reached out to them after I did it, didn't hear back, so. <laughs> you know, again, you know, I'm, you know, like every each one of you guys, it should be for you. It's not for them, it's for you to kind of just see, to experiment with, and to kind of get better at what you do. So then this would be the website, and again, it's this idea of mirroring over the typography. And then this is it, they have the t-shirt. So we, I kind of lied, we had active models. <laughs> so. So this is this sketch is gonna make no sense to you, so I'm gonna have to explain a little bit. I was walking home and I work in Times Square, which is hell on earth, because there's so many tourists that as someone that works there, I'm forced into the street basically. And um, so I'm walking really quick and I had the, all this stuff you know, I'm carrying. And this piece of paper just kind of like floats by and like it caught my eye and I was like, what the hell is that? And what I thought I saw, and I'm pretty sure that piece of paper was probably like a strip club ad or something really, you know, totally different. But what I thought I saw was like this graphic diamond kind of grid. And so when I went home that night, I just sketched it out real quick. And I was like, how can I incorporate typography so that this grid, this really strong style grid, kind of marries with the typography in an interesting way? And so what I did was, I took that grid and I took these like famous quotes from famous fashion designers. And I found photos of models falling, and then I kind of had them in the background. <laughs> and then these, are, these are basically quotes. I'm not going to read the quotes, but basically they're like quotes that just say like, um, you know, it's, it's the person, it's not the clothing. And I just thought it was really funny this idea of these models falling, these quotes, and just kind of create like this really striking, dynamic uh, graphic. So this is when I was I was in Rome. And so I'm climbing up the stairs uh, to go to, I'm in the Vatican, St. Peter's, and we're going all the way up to the top, me and my wife. And I noticed like just, just one, one piece of type, um, and that was this particular piece that I took a picture of. And I just kind of studied it for a really long time, and I, I couldn't get over how beautiful the, uh, the serifs were. And I, I, as I was climbing up the rest of the tower, I was looking for more and more typography, but this is the only type that I found. And I was like, I was, I was kind of heartbroken because I think it was something where I saw it, I, I, I could almost visualize it, but it didn't exist yet. I think that that's how a lot of things, you know, that like if it's a personal project or if it's there's something more interacting with your daily life, you just want you just want that to exist. So this is my version of what I thought I saw. And so I, I instead of just taking it directly as is, I made it a little bit sexier, thinned it out kind of uh, kept the serifs kind of fun and like almost like a, a handlebar mustache. And um, these photos actually were taken by my wife when we were there. And so that was, again, like I talked about earlier, which was creating original content, taking the pictures yourself, doing it all yourself, not relying on, on photos uh, that are already out there. And then of course, you know, if you're in Rome, you've got to do Roman numerals, you can't do, you can't do digits, so I had to do uh, all the Roman digits, or the Roman numerals, excuse me. And then, again, like I told you before, it's this idea of having these mood boards, it's that having these expressions, uh, and then visualizing what the typography would look like. So this is what it would look like if it was for some fashion ad, or if it was a travel ad. So this is uh, from my friend Daniel Gordon, and Daniel Gordon is a triple threat. He is a voiceover artist, an actor, and a comedian. And so this wasn't as much a visual as it was just 
something that I thought I had saw, or rather, is this something that was what ties all three together? And what I realized was it was something that was basically not really there, which is the voice play points. And so this is his logo. And this would be his business cards. And then, so the idea here is then that each part of them is broken out. So he goes on a job for an acting gig, he can get his postcards and leave behind. He goes out as a comedian. And the idea here, I had a really specific shape. I wanted to feel like he was on stage, he was a comedian, you know, stand up comic, kind of uh, had that silhouette. And then the voiceover, which is more subtle. And then you kind of see that. So this would be his voiceover CD that would house like all his audio tracks for different commercials. And then this would be his website. And again, it's this idea of like creating these voice wavelengths and kind of taking something that you hear and making it a visual. So this next project, uh, in New York there's construction everywhere, like every street corner, it's really annoying. Um, but what I, what I started noticing was that these, there was these really cool, fun construction, uh, construction elevators. And they're always bright orange. And they're bright orange, obviously, so someone didn't run into them, I guess. But what's so fantastic about them is that they're temporary, and these little buckets go up and down, and you go into the floors. And, and I started thinking, like, what if this was a font? What if this was, like, somehow a font, like, the structure just being so, so graphic? So what I did was, I took that idea of this orange kind of font and like these elevator boxes, and what I did was I set the type so that it'd be basically running straight down, and I, I, I utilized what I thought was a worm's eye perspective looking at the, uh, the elevators, but now that I've looked at this so much, it actually is also a bird's eye view, so it's like kind of like optical illusion, which I thought was really fascinating after I created it, because I created it one way, and, then, and now I can't, I can't unthink it, and now I just can see it the other way. So for this, um, I started, when I started realizing, um, I'm, I'm traditionally, my background's like print design, I really, I did not do any uh, web classes when I was in school, like Dreamweaver and Flash, and I just didn't really see the point in learning those, I just didn't really like them. <laughs> what I realized was that my ideas, conceptually, were sometimes better produced in other mediums. And so what I started doing was I started playing with animations in the beginning. And obviously it stressed, it stressed me out quite a bit because it's a new medium I had never used before. And, but then as I slowly relaxed and was like, okay, this is, this is good, yeah, I need to keep doing this. I started doing these short videos. And really what happened was this medium that was so foreign to me that I, I really had really no business being in actually became like a passion. I really, st I started loving the idea of moving image. All right, so this is gonna be a short animation and this is the animation that started off my website. And there's no sound. So I'm just going to play it. I think, um, so that's, and this is actually, so it's a, it's a little bit out of context because on my website it would be an animated GIF. It would be constantly going. It was a little bit quicker, a little bit more um, flashier. Uh, but the idea was, there's so many times where I think when, when MTV did a redesign, we, we like cropped the logo and then we used it as like a, a window to have like a bunch of pictures inside of it. But I really wanted to take the logo to physical places and shoot it in those physical places. And I thought that, that was something that would just felt more genuine to me and, um, and it was something that I really wanted to experiment. So when we were, when I was over in Japan, uh, I shot a bunch of these. Okay, and so this is the, the next project. So this next project is the quarter mark. So every time it was a quarter mark, or a halfway mark, or a three quarters mark, I went back to the logo and kind of did a different thing to kind of mess it up and kind of like try, new, uh, try a new way of experimenting with it. So here's number 13. So again, this is an animated GIF for on my website. I think there's something really beautiful about how the water just kind of took the logo, did its own thing. 
I really liked that interaction. It seemed really pure and really uh, genuine to me. Yeah. So this next project is the Midway Point. Again, playing with the logo, but in a different way. And this is actually, um, we were going on a train, and we snuck to the back of the train. And this is obviously post 9-11, so people are like freaked out. You have a camera anywhere that's like not supposed to be. And so we went to the back, and we shut. There's this beautiful like window, and I'll show you in a minute what it looks like. And just like this idea of we're static, we're going to stand there, and the background's going to change. And I just thought there was something really awesome about that. And again, this idea of playing with the logo, but in a new, refreshing way. And then we got yelled at, and we had to look at our person. <laughs> So on my website, it will be basically you go forward, and then you go back, and then you go forward, and then you go back. So just short little gifs or gifs. Okay. So the so this is the three quarter mark, almost done. So excited. Again, taking the logo to a new environment and interacting with animals. Okay, so after I finished all these animations, I thought, I have this really great idea. I, had a, I was sick at the time, and I, I, you know, like, my nose is running and really congested with a lot of mucus. And I'm like, oh, where are the tissues? And I couldn't find them. I'm asking my wife. I'm in the apartment. And what I realized was that, like, what, what if I didn't have hands? What if I couldn't stop the mucus from coming out? That sounds really gross. So, <laughs> Instead, I thought, well, instead of mucus, what if it's like graphic shapes? This is, and this does have sound, so hopefully, you know, let me just, it's nice and loud. Again, it was a new medium. It was After Effects. It was shooting uh, all these pictures, and it was putting it together. And creating all the graphics took so much time. And I mean, I, I'm sure with you guys, you do these projects, and it's like it takes months or or insane amount of hours. And you click play for like 30 seconds, not even. It's like over. And it, it was just a really, it really, it was a great moment because it inspired me. And towards the end of my project, like I said, I kind of started doing work that was a little outside of my comfort zone in terms of the medium. And so it was more short videos. So this next one, like I said, was towards the end of the project. And um, I started feeling like I was getting pulled in all directions. And so I made a video of that. How do I how do I take these Photoshop th these things that I hate about Photoshop and how do I make them funny and like kind of redo it so this idea of like what happens if you get stretched what if you you like in real time can stretch yourself so that's that idea. so this next project um, kind of it was more inspired by this idea of getting to a situation you think you're going to solve it but you only make it worse and uh, I think you'll you'll see what I mean.
also good is that when you have your own personality come out of the work, you can sound more goofy. So um, I think that's really a uh, really important part of it is, is letting yourself, who you are, shine through your projects, especially if they're personal. I mean, why not? Okay. So I finish all 52 projects. I'm extremely happy. But remember that Tag Director's Club show I told you about? Well, that's actually two weeks after I, I finished the project. For some reason, there was this date. It was 16, it was six, it was June, so it's 6, 13, 13. I just really, I don't know why, I just really love that number, and I thought this would be a great time to have a show. It'll be two weeks after. But little did I know that with that short deadline, I would be basically getting everything ready for the show, framing everything, and on top of that, I wanted to do a project that was specific to the space. Because I felt like, if you're going to come to my show, then I'm going to do something that you haven't seen before. So this is the invite to the show. And the idea, at first I was thinking, OK, I'm just going to represent all 52 projects, like small dots, and it's going to be kind of reminiscent of what I did on my site. Because on my site, I have like each project does like a circle. And it's like, Thing. But then I, I realized that like what it is is it's like this building up. It's this heavy thing. It's it's it's, it's all all the projects at once, right? So the Tech Directors Club show went off uh, really well. We had about 200 people show up the night of the opening, and then various people uh, showed up to the gallery. After that, it was up for two months in New York. So when you walked in, I did want to have a visual representation of all 52 projects, because the last thing I wanted you to do was fill this gallery in a way that every single project was represented. I didn't think, and in a gallery like this, you want to be really specific with projects, you want to have a real purpose to why you're hanging, what you're hanging, and where you're hanging, if that makes sense. So you walk in, you see all the projects, and these actually, I created more work for myself because I didn't want each project to be represented because there's so many components to each project. So what I did was I took each project and I kind of created like a kaleidoscope effect. So I redid the artwork. And then this artwork, uh, a few people ended up buying and actually sold really well. So this is the one wall. Um, and it's pretty much your standard, like what you would expect in the gallery. Uh, really great space. There's these three spaces. And, um, and just have the ability to kind of really show posters really well. So I knew exactly what to do on this wall. Easy. And then um, when it came to framing, I really, I felt like, first off, I don't have a lot of money. So I wasn't going to go out and spend thousands of dollars in frames. And so what I ended up doing was taking uh, sheets of acrylic that I bought wholesale, and I sandwiched them together with posters. And then I bought these like pegs, that, uh, these uh, metallic pegs that stuck out about two inches off the wall. And it floated the pieces, and it really gave it like a really nice finishing. I will warn you, though, this is the most complicated math. It is so annoying to hang these things. So it looks beautiful, but I don't know if I would do it again. So this, um, what's really great about the Tech Directors Club is that they have this video screen, and the projector allowed me to show basically all my forms of my type of, of all my forms of my work. So I had the print work, and then I had the video work. So this was playing as the show was going on. So this I kind of have to explain. So basically, when I finished the project. It was kind of like, oh shit, I did it. It's over. That's it. So I'm just going to go back to the uh, to these doors. So these doors, are, these are closet doors. And um, so on the other side is this great opportunity to have these awesome posters. And then opposite of that is like this dead space, these closet doors. No one, I mean, no one's going to go into them during the show. And so what I realized was like, OK, how can I create a project that can fill this wall? And so what I did was I took Universe, I used a really thin weight, and basically just put it over the doors, kind of ignored the lines on the doors. And then what I did was I crumpled up uh, tin foil. Again, being smart with materials, I didn't want to do something that was going to be super, you know, how can I get the most from, from how, the least amount of money? And so what I did was crumple up this tin foil and wrapped it. And as you walk by, it was spotlights on, it kind of interacted with you in a way. So it was kind of an interesting piece where it was static, but it also kind of reacted as you moved in the room. I did it, exclamation point. So this is that side of the gallery. And the idea was, at some point, you'd be looking and you kind of would connect the two. If you didn't get it, it wasn't a big deal. I thought, oh shit, it just sit on its own, it's pretty funny. But I, I, put, I put a little comma in so that there was a connection. 
But I think Oh Shit and I did it, it kind of worked on its own. Some people got it. Um, when the space was filled, it was a little bit hard to get, but it didn't really bother me. I think, I think it was dynamic enough. Okay, so this is gonna be my last project that I'm gonna show tonight. Uh, and then afterward, I'll take any questions. Um, but this is basically uh, a, really, a video that, that did really well. Uh, when I posted on Facebook, there was a lot of shares and a lot of people liked it. And people who, whose backgrounds weren't design, and I think it was the first time that I realized how impactful these videos can be and how, um, I, I mean, I love typography, but I think there's something about video component, pressing play, having the control of the viewer, uh, with both the sound and visuals. And so this is what, so at the time I was thinking I really would love to go on vacation. So this is what instant vacation would look like if you go anywhere in the world. Now with that being said, I went on vacation for one full year and I wore the same clothes every time I went out on vacation the whole year. And I tricked my wife into going on vacation with me and photographing me in all these different places doing the same action. So you'll see what I mean. But, um, and then actually I'm going to be shooting tomorrow in DC so you might see me around. All right, so here we go. Sunday nights were like, was like, it's another Monday. But um, as soon as, it's kind of funny because I kind of took the summer off, I kind of relaxed a little bit, met with a bunch of people. But I realized I really missed it. And it was something that, an opportunity that I wanted to do again, and I'm kind of pursuing that right now. So it was, it's like this weird thing. I think in life, like, I think all of us kind of have it where it's like when it's over, you're going through it, it's like horrible. But when you look back, it's like the best thing. And you just remember those really good moments. And it's like weird, it's like, I want to go back to that, and my wife will remind me, she'll be like, that was horrible, what are you talking about? <laughs> Every Monday, you're so anxious. And I was like, yeah, but like so much work. I think I just missed being so productive, and just seeing how something started on Monday was then finished by that week. So thanks. And then you get a poster. Yay! Thank you for asking the first question. <laughs> Maybe the second question, we got a poster to us. Who's got the next question? That come to you with the microphone. This is fun for the show. Okay, so I saw this near project. She kind of had like, something that inspired you, and then you were able to walk that. But what was your process for the week when you kind of just sitting around saying, like, I have nothing, I don't know what I'm going to do, what's going to happen? 
I think I think um, when I first started it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna like stockpile like five projects. I know I have like a wedding this weekend, and like Christmas is gonna come up, and I have to go home. So realistically, it was like, okay, I'm just gonna have like this stock. But that that like having that stock made me super lazy. So as soon as that like ran out, I was like, shit, I have to like create like projects right now. I really think it's the deadlines that inspire you. I'm, gonna, I'm not even kidding. Like, I would Monday morning was like, I gotta start sketching, otherwise I'm screwed. And my wife can attest to this. It's like you gotta get it done. And I think, and again, it's that responsibility that you put out there. You said you're gonna do it. You publicize it at work. So I'd go into work on a Monday or Tuesday, and they'd be like, Yo, what's the project this week? And I'd be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So it's really it's that deadline. It's, it's, it's pushing yourself and having outside forces. Push you. That'd be it. Go ahead, Max. I've seen that you created different fonts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that you created different fonts. How many fonts have you created throughout your career? And does it inspire you to create more? Yeah, I, I think I started, I first, it's so funny because when I first started this, I was like, I love identities. I want to do logos, I want to be like an identity designer, I work with one of those big branding firms. And then I started doing like a little bit of, of more of the typography. I didn't keep track of the numbers of how many I created. And realistically, like, I, th I think if you were talking to a type expert, they would say that none of these are real types, or real fonts rather, because they're all just vectors. So I didn't take the time to like actually letter space everything out. Um, for me personally, I think it was just this like realization that like, I really love type, and that's why the marriage of the type directors club was so great and having that gallery show there. But to put a number on it, I don't know. And I and I think that um, it's just going to be like making more type and just kind of satisfying my personal needs. Where's that sound? Poster. Last post. Is that the last one? Uh, one more. One more. Uh oh. Everyone has a question. Who's got a question? Right here. Okay. You're next. Out of all 52 projects, which is your favorite? The last one. <laughs> uh, the last one I just showed, rather, 51, which was the video. I think it's because I, I got response from like ants. My ants on Facebook were like, this is cool. <laughs> and, it was like, and then friends of my family, they were like, wow. Uh, that's so cool that you did that with a green screen. I was like, what do you think, I have millions of dollars to do? I mean, that's like trans, I don't know, I think people go to the movies and they're like, oh, that's so easy to do, that's green screen. Um, I think because it deceived people, and people were like, no way you have all those locations, no way you would have seen clothes every day. <laughs> uh, that's not really impressive. Um, what's what interesting is that, so when I first started that project, I, we went to, we ended up going back to my wife's home country, which is Hong Kong, and then we went to China, and then we went to Japan. And I knew that like, I wanted to tie in all those locations. And so the concept really came from, or the project really came from this idea of like, how can I tie all these locations in together? Then when I was back in New York, I went back to my parents' house in Pennsylvania, so you saw like, that green field in Pennsylvania. It was like, how can I tie all these things together? And, and I think because it was a year long, really it was a year process, and you're gonna say, well, you cheated. But realistically, I edited it in one week, so that's how I justify shooting it throughout the whole year. Because I had I to stay strict to the rules. Uh, but I would say definitely that was my favorite. And it was just because so many, I got such great feedback. And it was from people who weren't designers. So it was, it was, that was really cool. It was very cool. Last poster, sorry. Even though it's the last poster, next question asker, don't be discouraged. We have end blue t shirts, which are not nearly as exciting, but keep asking questions. Your turn. So I'm just kind of curious, like, what your takeaway is from the whole thing. Are you going to keep doing this in your spare time? And how do you feel about doing what you're really passionate about at night instead of during the day? Your day job, like, do you think there's a lot of blend? Yeah, there is. There is definitely a real compromise between um, doing things at night versus during the day because you're a bit tired and uh, you're not always in the mood to like create something. Um, but it's I think it's kind of like, it's this weird thing. I never had it where like I was like, oh, I have to make a font this week because I really feel passionate about it. And I'm going to go back to what I said before, which was like, it was just this idea of like these deadlines that would force me to do the work. And I think um, 
once I finished that, like I was saying, it's just like, I just really wanted to create more. And even now, like, I'm a little bit jittery because I, I haven't created a project in a while. I actually just spent some time meeting with a lot of other designers who, you know, maybe could make the show, whose work I really like up in New York. And so I think I, I just, what they say, like 40, right, 40 days of dating, right? It's this idea of a habit. So I, I've definitely passed 40 days in the whole year. So it's hard to take something like that. It's almost like a relationship. You can't break up. <laughs> I don't know where Max went. Okay, next question. Uh, yeah, you want to we'll take a question up here in the front first. So. Did everyone hear the question? That was good. Everyone hear the question? Repeat it, please. So basically, the first, a uh, two-part question. The first was, how does this impact my work at my day job? And then how did it impact my relationship with my wife? Is she more working very closely together? So the first part was that uh, at MTV, a lot of the style uh, is kind of dictated by this house style. There's so many different things that we need to create. There's the mobile stuff. There's the websites. There's the print ads. Everything has to be kind of simplified. So at work, I still I still struggle with it, really. I struggle with the fact that like I have to kind of um, work through someone else's vision. And I'm kind of like working towards figuring out what I want in the future versus you know working for someone else. I don't know where I want to go, but I think probably eventually be by myself on my own studio. And the second half was that with in regards to my wife working so closely with her, well first off, uh, I just want to thank her for all the hard work. So she was very helpful throughout the whole project. And what I realized is that we kind of grew together. And it was very cool because some couples, you know, the, the husband or the wife is someone who's maybe not in the art, art profession, which is a little bit weird. But with us, it just really clicked. And of course, I worked the shit out of her. You know, so the guy in the office. Shoot, no, let's do more projects. She's like, no. But um, <laughs> you know, this is how it is. Right? So it was, it was great. Next question. Is there someone? Someone? Okay. Who's got the next question? Who wants to ask something? Oh, awesome. Okay, before this question, I just wanted to thank this girl here, Marina. She's the reason that, that we managed to get connected to John nice. and have him here. So she's one of the most talented designers in the DC area. Uh, if you want to have your time, I'm sure. Design your time, I'm sure. Okay, anyway, here's your question. How did you get over the moments of self-doubt, if you had any moments of self-doubt? There's a lot of moments of self-doubt. There's a lot of moments even tonight of self-doubt. Um, I, I think that, um, for me, again, it's this idea of like, you tell everyone, you're accountable. And I think that you start realizing that, I realized that like, I kind of surprised myself with what happened, with what actually was the end result. Like I said, I, I went into it thinking like, I'm just gonna do prints, it's gonna be like logos, and I end up doing like these, these, these videos. And I'm still really bad at making videos, but it's really like the concept was there, and that's where it led me to. Um, does it ever go away? I don't know if stop that goes away. I think you just gotta keep, keep going and kind of ignore the negative comments. I felt really lucky that I, I got a lot of really positive feedback and I asked a lot of really talented people what they thought and they gave me very honest opinions. Um, but I, I don't have an easy answer for that. I think it's just creating and putting it out in the world and just getting better. And I can remember leaving school and just being like, I thought I was a man. I thought my work was so good. And it sucked. No, what's crazy is I showed it to my wife and she's like, this written, like this is obviously a year we got married and we, I was doing this project. She's like, your work was horrible. Why are you so confident? <laughs> so it was a false sense of confidence that you need to start. But uh, from this project, it definitely like kicked my ass. But like, I'm way, way more excited to do work design and way more um, focused on the nuance and the small details. Just, just do it. Who cares? You don't have to. You don't have to make it as, as public as I did. And again, you know, like for me, like it made sense. You can just do it. You can do all the projects in a year and launch the website, and then you know, 
that would be the smart thing to do all the projects first and then launch the website. That would, I would, you should do that. That's better. Don't do this. Though. This is horrible. More questions? Two part question. One, was there an average amount of time it took a project per week? I mean, some weeks it was two hours, some 20. Yeah. And then the other was. <laughs> so I, mean, I think, um, yeah, I mean the videos were like crazy, and it was like from a technical standpoint. I mean, I would just it would be like a Sunday night, and it was just like, what the fuck did I get into? I was just like, well, why did I do this? And realistically, it's like I can say without a doubt, I went to bed around two o'clock every night. That is indefinite, if not later. So I don't know, forty-hour work week. I was going help with math. Was a hundred hours? Plus I don't know. I mean, on average, maybe around 100, you know, stockbroker hours. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's kind of a tough thing. I think really, if you start a project, finish it. Don't let it sit in the shelf. Just finish it. And no matter how much time it is, no matter how late at night, you're going to be so happy you finished it. And I think that what I realized was that if it was 6 a.m., it was 6 a.m. Who okay. cares? You know, and there was definitely projects. My goal was Monday, but Monday could have been my show. midday. Well, I have to go to work, so I have to get out of I have to my, my house by nine. So it's like uh, I, I really stuff at seven a.m. You know, not sleeping, and then go to work, and then work, and then come home, and yeah, that was that was a vicious cycle. Do the projects before, and then set it off to the website. Yeah. Yeah. You had talked about how when you started out, your vision was you know, one thing, and then it kind of transformed throughout the year into something you know that you hadn't quite expected. And I was just really curious as to um, you know, you coming through different mediums and forums, as you mentioned, and kind of getting out of your comfort zone. So I was just curious where, if there was a kind of more uh, concrete vision of what you're looking to uh, continue, that you really enjoyed, or something that maybe a couple little paths away that you're looking to you know, get into from this experience. Okay, so first off, this guy's a spy. So this is my best friend Matt from high school. And I hadn't seen Matt in probably since my wedding in two years, but he lives over here in Virginia. So I was like, dude, you gotta come. You should come to the show. Matt is not a designer. So I really appreciate you coming out tonight. Um, but Matt's got a great question. You know, where where do you go from here? Where do you go after you have your personal projects? I think it's gonna be more videos. I think the style of work that I did for the 40 days of dating, I'd like to turn that into like paying work be nice, you know, so doing more typography that's more hand-done, and, and, and definitely doing videos. I just really love that stuff. And I think, you know, hopefully one day, have the, the daytime to actually do projects instead of you know, going somewhere else and doing two jobs. Or Max one. Next question. Is Matt, okay, I'm gonna come back. <laughs> In regards, Back to the, we're watching. In, the, in regards to the 40 days of dating thing, how did that come about and like what did it mean to you and like where did, I mean obviously you said that it was like something pretty easy but like. Oh, uh, well, right. So the question is like where, I actually, I worked with Jessica Walsh at Pentagram. We were, she was on Paul Scher's team, I was on uh, Luke Kamen's team at the time. So we kind of were friends and then she ended up going to like print magazine and then ultimately I, I we said and say my farming up. So we knew each other and um, I actually just I sent her the invitation to the gallery show and I was like, hey it'd be really cool if you could come, it'd be really great. Not expecting really to get an answer. It was more like, hey, you know, we kind of we go back, you know, it'd be cool if you came, no big deal. And she answered me like right away. She was like, I'm gonna be in Chicago, but I'm gonna like I'm gonna I'm doing this project, it's called like 40 days of dating or I date, you know, Tim Goodman, all this stuff. So before this whole thing blew up. Um, and and she was like, here's three quotes, whatever you want. And the, the, the sheets the sheets one just jumped out at me. And I was like, I know exactly what I want to do. And so I ended up just uh, kind of, like I said, it designed itself. But it was more because I did all the experimentation. I did all the hours. Like, you guys, you guys do all the sketches. You do all the work. The clients didn't see that. And so it was that moment, I was like, I know exactly what I want to do. So it was kind of like that moment. And so again, it was because I invited her to the show 
and uh, and this is the, the nice uh, runner up runners up prize, I guess. More questions? One more drink. Okay. Um, so you said that um, the medium that was hardest for you was like doing the videos and stuff like that, but removing the medium, what was like the hardest conceptually thing, project that you did, or just in general? I think, um, I'm just gonna go back to the front, sorry, just like to turn around. I think the, um, the project that was the hardest was probably the milk project, where I uh, poured the, the milk through the cups. I was like sweating bullets. I didn't think that was gonna look good. In my head, I was like, this is gonna look really cool, but this is gonna look horribly bad. And we shot it, and at the time, we didn't have the proper lighting system, so we really relied on natural light from the studio. It's a friend's studio, it wasn't even our studio. Again, you guys get that money. So we, we shot it, and we just did it in the afternoon on a Saturday. And um, really, it was preparing for that. So it was cutting every single cup out. And my wife definitely helped with that. So I'm not gonna take any credit for that. Um, it, it really was, because it was so time sensitive. And it was like, if this doesn't work, I have nothing, I have no, like this is it, it has to work. And uh, so I would say like, stress levels were very high. And it was, it was probably, and, and at the same point, like it was one of my most memorable pieces. I love that piece. I love the, the bits. That's what I mean. You say that about project. The next question. Let's check this phone in. Next question. I'm tweeting about you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I have a question. All right. I think, I think, uh, so, I, I would probably say like when I first started, I think it was the, the Green Hand Paint really was a project where I finally was like, I'm not gonna do something in the computer, I'm really gonna try to just do something physical, and like, like I said, like get back to drawing, get back to actually using my hands. And I think for me that was like a breakthrough project just because I finally like let my guard down and then it worked out really well. And it was like building that confidence, building it to be like, okay, I can do this, now let me, let's see how far I can push this thing. And then that ultimately, like I said, ended up with like animated GIFs and the short videos. Uh, but I would say like the first product that was like, wow, like really nailed it, was definitely the uh, hand paint, as I call it. Or someone said hand medica. <laughs> said hand medica, that's way smarter. That's why I just call that. Again, like I was just working for the week, like just, I'm not thinking copy-wise what I want to say. That's why I just called the projects project one, two, three, I just, it was more about what, what the visual was. I was more concerned with that. You want to have another question? All the way to the back. Max is going to run back. Run, Max, run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. I'm going to. You compared a lot of what you did to like getting in the habit of doing it. Did, was there a significance to when you started it, or what was the motivation to just start and just go in? That is, that's a great question. So, I think realistically, when designers get up here, they give a speech, they talk about this great type, or this great project that they did. We'll talk about, you know, Adrian Fruger, uh, or like, uh, you know, Paula Cher, or Stephanie Snakemeister, like I did. But realistically, uh, this is like a pretty, uh, this is a tough, tough, uh, tough subject to talk about, but I want to share, because I think it's really important. Uh, three of my aunts died of cancer at a very young age. And uh, I didn't want to take for granted the time I had to do projects. And so on January 1st of 2012, I said, I'm gonna start this, I'm gonna finish it. So I think it was like a dedication to them uh, because they were a huge influence on my life. And uh, it's not a font or a color, it's real life. Questions? The good news is, is John's going to stick around, so while we're all drinking and partying, we can still talk to him. Uh, anybody have a question? Oh, ow. Thanks, <laughs> You have to stand. So, um, so, do you think that you are most known for the work that you've been paid for, 
or the work that you have not been paid for. Sub question, how do you feel about it? <laughs> well, uh, I feel really good about that. The work that I do, if you go to mtv.com, you can see. And I think there's something, I mean, I don't, I don't, if you do a search for me, you're not going to find anything that's MTV related besides like in my bio or something. And I, I want to separate myself from the work that I do at my day job. That was a conscious decision. And that's, that's kind of what I wanted to answer the question in a roundabout way. I think, um, I think all of us have the potential to do great work. And I think that sometimes it's better to not associate yourself with like a huge company like MTV and to kind of show who I am as an artist. You know, more focus about me than it is about you know, what Miley Cyrus did with the VMAs. <laughs> Right, so you know, because then that's gonna it's gonna kind of affect my work. You're not right. gonna take me seriously if I just show like, you know, the amazing like, like, like dancing around, like dancing around. You know, so I, I, it just depends. You know, it just depends. Also, what do you want to do? Do you want to? Do I want to continue to work at like a, a huge broadcast company? Well, then I'm gonna show that work. You should be showing the work that you want to get. That was that was not my advice. It's advice from college. <laughs> I just sound really smart. Okay. Any other questions? Or is everyone just want to start training? Can we get a big thank you? Uh, Include is now closed, and club include is not open. <laughs> I'm trying that one. Uh, anyway, John's sticking around. We still have a ton of beer, a ton of alcohol. We got three slices of pizza. <laughs> um, but we're going to clear out these chairs. We'll put on some music. Hang out with your friends. Uh, go talk to Joe Sprott. He's my best friend. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for coming out. Thank you for being part of DC Design Week. Thank you, KAGA. Thank you, for John. Thank you to his infinitely patient and talented wife. Woo! Uh, and again, thank you to you for coming out here on Friday night to talk about this amazing work. Uh, and then squiggly lines and all that good stuff. Anyway, have a good time. We're going to clear up the chairs. Stick around. This is going to be the best party in town. Yeah.